we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and in what I failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, as Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, Creator and Ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The prophet Isaiah present to us the suffering servant of God. In his obedience and suffering, this mysterious figure is the embodiment of the Lord Jesus. A reading from the book, the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. He is near who upholds my right. If anyone wishes to oppose me, let us appear together. Who disputes my right? Let that man confront me. See, the Lord God is my help. Who will prove me wrong? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice in supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me the day I called. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. The cords of death encompassed me. The snares of the netherworld seized upon me. I fell into distress and sorrow, and I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, save my life. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Gracious is the Lord and just. Yes, our Lord is, our God is merciful. The Lord keeps the little ones. I was brought low, and he saved me. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. For he has freed my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I shall walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. James writes that living faith must be authenticated with, with good works. It is not enough to wish someone well. We must attend to the per that person's need. A reading from the letter of St. James. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister has nothing to wear and has no food for the day, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm and eat well, but you do not give them the necessities of the body, what good is it? So also faith of itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Indeed, someone might say, you have faith, and I have works. Demonstrate your faith to me without works, and I will demonstrate my faith to you 
from my works. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples set out for the villages of Caesarea Philippi. Along the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others one of the prophets and he asked them but who do you say that i am peter said to him in reply you are the christ then he warned them not to tell anyone about him he began to teach them that the son of man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and rise after three days he spoke this openly then peter took him aside and began to rebuke him at this he turned around and looking at his disciples rebuked peter and said get behind me satan you are thinking not as god does but as human beings do he summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. And whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and that of the gospel will save it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Ngayon po'y ating babasahin ang minsahi pastoral ukol sa kultura ng pagpatay at pagdarambong mula sa mga arsobispo ng Hilagang Luzon. Ang anak ng tao ay dapat mamatay at muling mabuhay. Minamahal naming bayan ng Diyos sa Hilagang Pilipinas. Ang Mesiyas ay dapat na mamatay at mabuhay muli pagkalipas ng tatlong araw. Nabatid ng Panginoon ang kanyang kapalaran at sa pamamagitan ng kanyang pagkamatay at muling pagkabuhay, tayo ay mapapatawad sa ating mga kasalanan. Kailangang matupad ang sakarpisyong ito bilang kanyang wagas na pagtalima sa Ama. Ang kamatayan ni Jesus ang tanging kamatayan na ating kailangan. Walang ibang kamatayan ang kailangan upang mapabuti ang ating kalagayan, umakamtan ang awa ng Diyos. Ang kamatayan ni Jesus ay kamatayang minsan at pang magpakailanman. Paano natin ilalarawan ang kasalukuyang panlipunang kalagayan ng ating bansa? Ito ay katulad ng paglagi sa lambak ng kamatayan pagpatay sa mga gumagamit ng droga at mga katunggali, kahabag-habag na mga kamatayan sa panahon ng pandemya, kamatayan dulot ng pamamahala na walang pananaw, kamatayan dulot ng pinakatalamak na katiwalian sa ating panahon, pagpaslang, pagkitil, kamatayan. Sa nakaraang limang taon, mahigit sa 30,000 maralitang Pilipino na ang pinatay sa kampanya laban sa iligal na droga. Pinapaslang ang mga mamamahayag, ang mga katunggali sa politika ay ipinapapatay. Ang mga hukom ng korte ay pinapapaslang, ipinababaril ang mga pari, at ang mga kritiko ay pinahihiya at pinagbabantaan. 
Ang pandemya ay isang kalamidad ng kalikasan na maari nating masugpo. May mga nasawi sa ating mga tahanan at mga opisina. Saksi tayo sa kabayanihan ng ating mga frontliners na nagbuwis ng kanilang kaligtasan habang ang iba ay namatay suot ang kanilang PPE. Habang ang, ilang, ang ibang bansa ay nakabangon na mula sa pandemya, ang mga namamatay naman dito sa atin ay patuloy na tumataas. Ang mga mahihirap ay dahan-dahang namamatay mula sa kawalan ng hanap buhay dahil sa nakalilitong kalasipikasyon sa pag-quarantine. Ang kawalang kakayahan ay pumapatay sa mga tao. Ang kawalang kaayusan ay pumapatay sa mga bansa at ekonomiya. Ang gutom ay marahang pumapatay. Ang bala ay maaring pumatay. Ang virus ay nakamamamatay. Ang pamamahala na walang patutunguhan ay nakamamatay. Ang katiwalian ay pumapatay. Ang mga trolls ay pumapatay gamit ang mga huwad na balita. Ang kagutuman ay nakamamamatay. Kailan magwawakas ang patayan? Ang mga kapuspalad ang nagbabayad sa katiwalian ng mga makapangyarihan. Ang ating bansa ay lumulubog sa utang. Wala na bang pag-asa? Hindi. Mapagtatagumpayan natin ang kasamaan sa pamamaraan ng kabutihan. Diyos ang ating pag-asa. Panahon na para pag sa pagsisisi at pagbabayad sala para sa mga kasalanan ng bayan at ng bawat isa. Maaari tayong magsagawa ng pagrorosaryo patungkol sa ating pagsisisi at mga dasal na humihingi ng habag sa Divine Mercy upang patawari ng Panginoon ang mga mamamatay tao at kanilang taga-sulusol. Nawa ang ating pagtitika ay magbunsod sa ating maging bukas palad at maging masigasig sa paggawa ng mabuti sa ating maliliit na pamamaraan. Hindi lahat sa atin ay makagagawa ng dakilang bagay, subalit maaari tayong gumawa ng mga maliliit na bagay, taglay ang dakilang pag-ibig ayon kay Mother Teresa. Tayong mga mamamayan ay dapat na masunurin sa batas, subalit hindi tayo mga duwag. Dapat nating tutulan ang mapaminsala at tiwaling pamamalakan, gabay ang Compendium of the Social Doctrine of the Church, number 400, na sinasabing matuwid ang pagtutol sa pamanunungkulan kapag talamak o paulit-ulit itong lumalabag sa mahalagang prinsipyo ng likas na batas o natural law. Isinulat ni Santo Tomas Aquino na ang bawat isa ay manararapat na sumunod hanggat ayon ito sa katarungan. Ang natural law kapag nilabag ay dapat tutulan. Ang hindi marahas na pagtutol tulad ng mapayapang pagtitipon upang tumutol o mahinahong pang pagtatalakayan ng mga usaping panlipunan sa patnubay ng Ibanghelyo o mga pagtitipon para sa usaping katapatan at kabayanihan ay ang daan na nararapat nating piliin palagi. Ito ang tanging mabuti at katanggap-tanggap na pagtutol. Mayroon tayong tungkuling moral upang labanan at itama ang kultura ng karahasan at kabuktutan dahil sa patuloy na lumalabag at paulit-ulit na pagtatago o pagsisira sa katotohanan. Patunay ang kasaysayan, ang demokrasyang walang tamang pagpapahalaga ay madaling mabaling sa balat kayong totalitarianismo. Sa number 408 ng parehong kompedyong, tinuturuan tayong sa demokratikong sistema 
ang pamumuning politikal ay may pangnanagutan sa mga mamamayan. Ang mga ehensya ay dapat magpasa ilalim sa mahusay na panlipunang mga pamamaraan. Ang pananagutan ng mga inihalal upang magsulit ng kanilang mga nagawa ay mahalagang bahagi ng isang demokratikong pamamalakad. Dahil dito, sinus, sinususugan, binabasbasan, at hinihimok natin ang malawakang pagsisiyasat ng mga nasakatungkulan sa kahit anong alingasaw ng korupsyon habang atin ding pinupuna, sinasaway at tinutuligsa ang mga taong sumusugpo sa legal na pamaraan upang matamu ang katotohanan at katarungan. Sasabihin din natin sa kanila ang mga salita ng Panginoon, Lumayo ka sa akin, Satanas. Hindi mo ipinag-iisip ang mga bagay na ukol sa Diyos, kundi ang mga bagay na ukol sa mga tao. Sa malayang hal halalan upang humirang at mapalitan ang mga nakalukluk at pinakamainam na pamamaraan upang panagutin ang mga nasaka pangyarihan. Sa gayon, tayo nanawagan sa ating mga kabataan at mga bagong botante na magparehestro. Nakikiusap tayong bigyan halaga ang mga nag-aatubiling kumadindato ang kanilang pagkamakabayan upang maibalik ang kagandahang asal sa ating politika at tumakbo sila ayon sa udyok ng konsensya at hindi sa mga survey. Hindi ito ang panahon para mawalan tayo ng pag-asa bagkos ang pagpapalakas ng loob. Hindi ito panahon upang manahimik Bagkos ay manindigan para sa Diyos. Laban sa agos ng mga pagpaslang at pandarambong, sumaksi tayo sa katotohanan at buhay. Nawa si Apu Baket na ipinagdiriwang natin ang kanyang kaarawan ngayong linggo ay gabayan tayo sa katotohanan at buhay. Si Jesus ang Panginoon. Mula sa Katedral Metropolitan ng Conversion of St. Paul, St. John the, the Evangelist, at St. Peter, September 12, 2021. Lubos na suma sa inyo, Marlo M. Peralta, Arsobispo ng Nueva Segovia, Socrates B. Villegas, Arsobispo ng Lingayin Dagupan, Ricardo L. Bacay, Asobispo ng Tugigaraw. Atin na pong ipahayag ang ating pananampalataya. I believe in one God, uh, Father, Father Almighty, Maker of Heaven and Earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, consubstantial with the Father. Begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate, He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now turn to our gracious Father, that He may deepen our faith and strengthen our hope as we acknowledge His Son, Jesus, as our Messiah. With hearts full of confidence, we pray. Lord, listen to the prayers of your people. Lord, listen to the prayers of your people. For the Holy Father, the bishops, the clergy, and all who exercise authority in the church, may they continue to be living witnesses of Christ amid all hardships and pastoral concerns. We pray. Lord, listen to the prayers of your people. For all government officials, may they acknowledge Jesus as their model and inspiration, that they may render honest administration and safeguard the dignity and rights of all. We pray. Lord, listen to the prayers of your people. For all catechists, may they continue to dedicate their lives to the mission of Christ as teachers and witnesses. We lift to you all their hopes and needs. We pray. Lord, listen to the prayers of your people. For the sick, the marginalized, victims of violence and injustice, and those persecuted because of their faith, may they acknowledge Christ as their sure hope and support as they go through pressing times. We pray. Lord, listen to the prayers of your people. For all the faithful departed, may they enjoy peace and happiness in the presence of the living God. We pray. Lord, listen to the prayers of your people. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Lord, listen to the prayers of your people. Father, listen to the supplications of your faithful. Our needs are great and our troubles so many, but your love for us is far greater. Rescue us in our distress as we acknowledge Jesus, your Son, who redeemed us, our true hope and lasting strength both now and forever. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gather them again to yourself. 
that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as your church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Socrates, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Dominic de Guzman, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say,
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies, so that its effects, and not our own desires, may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Some announcements. The Dominican Community of the Minor Basilica 
of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag is pleased to inform you that the October Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag will be on October 3, 2021, the first Sunday of October. The Novena Masses will be scheduled at 6 a.m., 7.30 a.m., 9 a.m., 10.30 a.m., 12 noon, and 4.30 p.m. from September 24 to October 2 of 2021. An additional Mass at 3 p.m. on September 26, Sunday. We invite you to participate in this Divina Masses and be one with us in expressing our devotion to Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. If you wish to sponsor one or several of the Divina Masses, you may fill out the form at the counters for Masses area and submit it with your donation, and you will be given an acknowledgement receipt. Or you may visit our website, www.manawagminorbasilica.org, at Online Pamisa, where you will find available online and other options for donation. All names of donors and sponsors for Novena Masses will appear in the Electronic Souvenir Program. Thank you very much for your continued support. God bless you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the God of all consolation alter your days in his peace and grant you the gifts of his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he free you always from every distress and confirm your hearts in his love. Amen. So that on this life journey you may be effective in good works reads in the gifts of hope, faith, and charity, and may come happily to eternal life. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. We'll now have the prayer for the sick for our sick brothers and sisters. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing, you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness toward our sick brothers and sisters. Free them from all illness and restore them to good health through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawang, so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they will gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.